Hey everyone, Dr. Clark here. I want to share with you the fantastic results from a new study looking at vestibular dysfunction in people that have Hashimoto's. So I have to do a lot of defining of some terms here, but the results of this study confirm what I've known for a very long time, that people with autoimmune conditions and people with Hashimoto's often have vestibular dysfunction. And they both need to be treated, both factors, in order for you to, to get well. So let's start with the, the basics. This study was done earlier this year, and it looked at euthyroid Hashimoto's patients. So these are people with positive TPO antibodies or positive thyroglobulin antibodies, but their TSH, T4, T3, they weren't abnormal. That's why they're called euthyroid. Now, they still have the antibodies, which means their immune system is targeting their thyroid gland, but they are not needing to take replacement hormones yet. So people, uh, researchers wanted to look at Hashimoto's patients to see if any of these people had vestibular dysfunction. So vestibular means your inner ear. And there's different ways you can test that, and they did that here in the study. They took these Hashimoto's patients and they screened out anyone that had already had symptoms of dizziness, uh, hearing problems. And what they wanted to find out is if these people had preclinical or subclinical damage to their vestibular system. So they took these people and they did a caloric test, which you may have heard of, where you get hot, uh, warmer, cold air or water in your ear, and they look to see how your eyes respond. It's not a, not a very pleasant test. They also did what's called a head shaking test. And they also did what's called a vestibular evoked myogenic potential, or a VEMP test. Don't really worry about what the tests were. What I can tell you is what they found, which is shocking. They found that 52% of the Hashimoto's patients had abnormalities in the VEMP test. They were abnormal. And they found that 44% of those people had caloric test abnormalities. So these people that had no vestibular symptoms had damage to their vestibular system, which means they're set up and are now predisposed to developing problems with balance, equilibrium, dizziness. They might even go on to develop full-blown Meniere's disease. And I've been saying for a long time that a huge number of people that I see with Meniere's disease, what it is, it's an autoimmune problem and responds well when you treat it like an autoimmune problem. And I've seen that again and again, and that's one of the things that this study ends up uh, pointing out. Now, here's the, one of the big points. They found that the higher the person's TPO antibodies levels were, the more vestibular damage they found on the tests. Now, why would that be? Well, the paper doesn't really go into it, but I can tell you that TPO antibodies, remember antibodies are like little uh, adhesive strobe lights that stick onto something your immune system wants to kill. Antibodies against TPO, which is thyroid peroxidase in your thyroid gland, those antibodies can cross-react or cross-attach to something that's not your thyroid. And specifically, they can attach to cells in your cerebellum, and it can cause dysfunction. That's one very probable mechanism. The other mechanism is, is when you have Hashimoto's, you have an autoimmune condition, and lots of different parts of your body can now be attacked, and some people their inner ear is the site of the attack, and they can develop full-blown Meniere symptoms where they get loss of hearing, tinnitus, dizziness, vertigo, imbalance. They can develop benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, which is a, a, a rotatory vertigo you get sometimes when you roll over in bed or lean your head back. I, I found this study fascinating because it's uh, confirmed what me and some of my colleagues that I work with have known for a long time is that a significant number of people that have Hashimoto's have got dizziness and vertigo and imbalance, and this confirms totally why that would happen. Likewise, I've seen a tremendous number of vertigo, dizziness, and balance patients that ha end up having autoimmune conditions that were undiagnosed, and when you treat them as such, as an autoimmune person, uh, they get better. They also found, and I thought this is interesting for some of you more technical people, is that otolithic structures are more, more vulnerable to damage than the semicircular canals. Now, some of my uh, uh, compadres are going to watch this and, and, and know what I mean. But basically, symptoms that are related more to general imbalance rather than spinning are what's probably going to show up in these people. So if you're someone who has Hashimoto's or you've even got dizziness or disequilibrium, you need to be checked to see if you've got an autoimmune problem. You have to be checked correctly. And then you've got to be treated correctly. So you've got to find someone who knows that these conditions all interact and that you might not only need to have appropriate uh, autoimmune management, not necessarily through medication, but you might also need to have neurological rehab, functional neurological rehab, 
to try to correct and compensate for some of the damage that's occurred from your autoimmune condition. Last thing I want to tell you is, you'll be talking about U thyroid Hashimoto's patients. This is yet another study to show that you don't have to have altered TSH, abnormal T4, T3, to have things go wrong in your body from Hashimoto's. I posted a video some time back that showed that all it takes is antibody levels to be too high for you to start having suffering. Here's another sh study that shows that all you need to have is the presence of an autoimmune thing happening and you can start to have dysfunction and damage in other systems. So, you need to find someone and work with someone who's trained both in the functional medicine way to appropriately handle autoimmunity, but also functional neurology to handle how to help you recalibrate and address the vestibular dysfunction that's occurring as well.